Hey guys, Arkas here, and today I just wanted to talk about whether you should summon for Oz and Hawk or not. They should be coming next week, um, literally in roughly three, four, five days. So in five days, Oz and Hawk should be dropping on the global version. And yeah, I just want to talk about, you know, they're, what they're good for, what their skills do, what the banner is and everything. So yeah. Before we open this, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when I upload. Now then, Ozone Hawk, right? They are an interesting unit, right? It's the second Ozone Hawk unit we have gotten so far, and they their main role that they play is that they are a new King, Festival King team support, right? And if you didn't know, <laughs> um, if you don't play PvP. Festival King is not really used that often. It's he's not. He's not in the meta. The meta is the unknown team, the bond team, and the um the one Eskinar team. Those are the main three teams you're gonna see in PvP. Also, Salt Meliodas is also used in PvP. Those are like the four like main teams that are like staples right now, right? And then of course there's off variations of those four different teams. Yeah, that's usually what the cycle is in PvP currently on the global meta from my experience, right? So, Ozanok is a blue unit, and their passive is all enemies take 35% more damage from poison, bleed, and shock. It does not work in deathmatch, right? That passive specifically is meant to work with Fez King because if you didn't know, Fez King's main ability is that he, um, specifically works with the debuffs poison bleed and shock he does extra damage based on this debuffs his passive stops ulk, uh, lowers their ult gauge by one at the end of the turn because of those debuffs and there's a few other things he does with those debuffs you know he just basically works around debuffing and stuff right especially those specific three he also works with corrosion but of course their passive doesn't you know work with corrosion their first card is a single target attacking bleed card that makes the target bleed for two turns on all three ranks and goes up from 140 to 210 to 350% damage, right? Their second card, it's a corrosion card, right? And it's an AoE inflicts corrosion damage equal to 15%, 20%, and then 20% of remaining HP, while the rank 3, it's max HP, right? Rank 3 is max HP. And then it's on all enemies and it's two turns then it goes to three turns of rank two and rank three right their ultimate is just the same as the red ocelon hawk it inflicts damage of 66 percent of attack on one enemy and if there are two or more enemies it expels the target for one turn if you get them six out of six it expels the target for two turns right expel makes it where they just get taken out of the match completely excludes the battle and skill targeting lowers the number of skill uses by one so basically what happens is that the turn they completely get expelled right uh they just they're just gone from the match for one whole turn if you have five out of six or lower the enemy cannot use more than two skills or one skill right and makes it to where they can't use those target skills anymore that target is not targetable. That unit cannot be targeted. He doesn't get hit by ults. He doesn't get hit by any form of skills. Even AoE. Until he comes back into the field. If he dies from this ultimate. He still gets expelled. The effect still happens. And the moment he comes back. He dies. He's just out of the field. Out of the match just like that. It's a really really strong ultimate. It's one of the big reasons why I put Oslo and Hawk the red unit. And A tier. Because their ultimate is insanely good and their skills are top tier. The only their their skills are specifically the help out of the king team, right? Because typically in the king team, you would on your third unit you'd run Kyo, um Wing Delane, you could also run Fez Zeldis, uh Red Lilia, you know, Goddess Liz, there are a few units that you can run, right? And of course there's also Green Gother is a version you can run. It's just a few versions you can run of the king team, right? 
And they'll be running right in the front because you need to, uh, they're better on the front than in the back because in the back you either have Fez, Eldris, or Winged Elaine. With them in the front, that's typically what you'll see with them. They have pretty good stats over here. Their crit chance is honestly, it's alright. Crit damage is pretty good. Their resistance is pretty good. Um, the lifesteal is actually pretty okay. Pure Spray's okay. And then the other stats are just fine, you know. They, they have pretty, you know, average to good stats. You know, they're not bad. They're not great. They're just good, right? Now let's go look at their banner. I have the banner here, right? And it's a 300-600 banner. Right, at 600, you get to choose Ozone Hawk. I'm pretty sure you also get to choose Fez, Zeldris, or Salt Notice if you would like. Um, so it's Ozone Hawk. Uh, that's Fez, Zeldris. That's a Salt Meliodas. That is, um, I'm pretty sure that's Red Zeldris. Let's quickly go check. I want to make sure. Don't want to give you the completely wrong info, right? So the Ten Commandments. Okay, now it's Blue Zeldris. So this is Blue Zeldris, Green Droll, Zartros. We have Nanashi, we have Blue Dion Meliodas, we have Persia, that's Blue Giant Dian, that's Green Escanor, and I actually have no idea which Bond that is. Uh, the Fox in a Green Bond? Venture Bonds, to be specific. I think it's one of these, isn't it? No, these are Cobra so it would be one of these ones, right? I, uh, no. Which one is this? Is it this blue one? Okay, it is the green nunchuck bond. So green nunchuck bond's on there. It's not a too terrible banner. I mean, I would say these bottom four are the bad ones. And these top ones are okay. Zeldris is not that good. So Zeldris, you know, Meliodas, Dian, Eskinor, Bond are all not <laughs> too good of units. I wouldn't call them good units at all. Uh, Nanashi, Zaratra, Stroll, and then the Fezians plus Ozan Hawk are the units you would want to pull off this banner if you want to pull some uh, better units. Um, they're not the greatest, right? You they they can be good, but the majority of the time on the King team, their other units want to run, and the King team is just yeah, they're, they're not that good in PvP compared to the current teams. Um. If you have the king, if you have Fez King 6 out of 6, I mean, he can work well in PvP. Because, I mean, legitimately his ult is severely strong. But these also in Hawk units, I mean... If you like the Fez King team and that's the team you run, I then go ahead and summon for him, right? Legitimately, they're, they are actually pretty good on the king team. Especially, you know, with other units that's on there. If you want to run them, run them. If you want to get them, get them. But if you... If you don't run the king team, don't don't get don't summon for them. Even as a collector's unit, they're not good. They're not. They're they're not that good. Yeah, there's not much more saying that. Um, you really shouldn't summon on them. Even like, if you run the king team, there are actually a lot of alternatives. So you could just save your gems for future banners, especially if you want to summon a Ragnarok, or if you want to continue summoning Bond because Bond's insanely good, or Arthur. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next video. Bye bye.